If you're very familiar with Outlook, you'll know that you can create routing rules inside Outlook to automatically process mail when mail comes in. So in Office or Outlook 365, Office 365 Exchange, we have something similar, but it's not specific to a particular mailbox. So if you come under Mailflow in your Exchange Admin Center, if you go to Mailflow and Rules, there aren't any predefined here, but this is where you can create routing rules. So you'll create one by adding it here. So we're going to create a new rule, and you'll see a bunch of them here that automatically are set, or that we have some automatic starts for. So apply Office 365 message encryption and rights to protect messages, apply custom branding, apply disclaimers, bypass spam filtering, and all of these you're going to add more to. You can also create your own here under create a new rule. And so we'll set a name for it, and we'll call it temp for whatever reason. And then apply this rule if, and here's where you can set your options. The sender is, the recipient is, the sender is located. And notice all of these have these three little dots or ellipses, which means there's more that we're going to add to it. So if the sender is, and then we'll choose who the sender is. So let's pick a sender if the sender is me. And then I'll click add. And hit OK. So if the sender is, then do the following. And then we can choose forward the message for approval, redirect the message to, reject the message with this explanation. So you see there's a lot of different options here. Now, in addition to these predefined ones here, you can also click on more options here. And this is going to give you the option to add additional conditions, add additional actions, so it makes your rules highly flexible. You can also set exceptions. So apply this rule if these conditions are met, unless this particular condition is met. And that's what your exceptions are. Now, your other options here, you can audit the rule severity level. And so this has to do with pulling up reports. So I can set this as a low priority, medium priority, and a high priority audit rule. And what that does is that means when I go to look at my audit logs, I can say only show me high priority, uh, high priority options. And so if this, mates, if this is set as high priority, then anytime this rule gets triggered and I look at the audit log with high priority settings, it will show it to me. But if I set this rule as low priority, and I'm looking at the audit log, looking only at high priority issues, then it won't show that. So that basically is, you know, how often do you want to see this? Or what level do you want to see this at? And then you can choose a mode for this rule. So enforce the rule means it takes effect right now. <clears throat> and it's going to happen. So test with policy tips. Now, not all of your licenses for Office 365 are going to allow policy tips to work. So like some things in Office 365, the options are going to be available based on your particular license. But what policy tips do is if somebody goes to send a message that would trip the rule, the policy tip is going to pop up and say, hey, there is a rule that impacts this. This is what's going to happen. It'll still allow it to happen. So if we're enforce, if we're not enforcing, if we're just testing it, it'll throw up that policy tip, but it'll still allow the user to go ahead and do it. To test without policy tips puts it in that test mode, so it's going to audit it. That's what testing does, but it's not going to stop it or prompt the user to uh, do something different. We also have activation and deactivation. So I can choose when this rule takes effect. I can choose when this rule ceases to take, uh, be effective. I can stop processing more rules. If I do that, then as soon as this rule gets tripped, all the other rules underneath it don't it they, they don't happen. But if I don't choose stop processing, then I may have something farther on down that would impact this message as well. And if I don't choose stop processing, then it allows that to take effect. Okay. <clears throat> So also notice right here, rights management services, a premium feature that requires, all right, just referencing back to what we were talking about a little earlier, you need to make sure that your licensing supports it. Now, this is a little bit different than the Acts, or than the Outlook rules that process incoming mail. But this can sometimes be useful if you want to 
control from a server level control what's going on with your messaging. Now I want to point out one in particular that a lot of companies will do and that is they will do the supply disclaimers rule. And so I'm going to do a temp disclaimers rule. Apply this rule if and then we can set whatever options we want. And then we are going to append a disclaimer and then we'll enter the text for that particular disclaimer. So basically what this allows us to do is add something that automatically gets attached to all emails going out or emails with specific you know, specific apply this rule if settings. But it allows us to attach disclaimers automatically and then somebody doesn't have to manually add that disclaimer anytime they send something this just automates that process if you want it to happen with any message that goes out then you're looking at this option right here apply to all messages so i'm doing edit text here just so we can see what this will look like this message is intended if i can type for the private use of its audience. And I still can't type intended, but you know what? That's what spell check is for. Any other use is prohibited. And then that disclaimer now is going to go out on any uh, message that gets sent out of this organization or will once uh, I click save. All right, so that's how we can set up uh, rules in order to kind of manage some of the mail flow inside of or outside of our organization. So there we go. That is managing rules in Office 365 Exchange.